Well, the weather sure can change here on the mountain. Just last week I was showing you here in the garden. Well, I was making these beds. I was working in 60 degree weather in the nice soft dirt. Now everything's frozen hot as a rock. The ground is like concrete out here. I was showing you this spot over here though that we were making to grow corn. And I was showing you down at the end of my drainage ditch I was going to dig down a little bit, make a spot to collect water for the garden, which I did. <laughs> I just wasn't planning on making a skating rink. <laughs> Well, I'm just glad we have lots of firewood. We always put up more than we think we're going to need. A good peace of mind that way. We don't have any trouble staying warm in the camp. We stay nice and cozy. The place holds the heat real well. Last week, well, the last couple weeks, when we're having these warm, sunny days, we haven't needed a fire in the greenhouse, but the weather we're getting right now is not conducive for germinating seeds. The little plants will tolerate the cold pretty good. But the seeds won't germinate if they're cold. So you gotta keep a fire going in there. So I've been borrowing from the house stack. But uh, we've got a ton of it here. Yeah, we still got a pretty good supply left there. Nice dry wood. The stack had come out to here. And that's how much we burned. We burned probably 60%, 55 to 60% of the stack. So that right there lasts us a long time. But days like today, <laughs> I gotta haul it down to the greenhouse. Well, that ought to hold us for a while. You know, on days like today, even though it's 20 degrees outside and really blustery, as long as we have clear skies and bright sun, I don't have to have the fire going in here. Um, for the last few weeks, we've had very few fires. Then we got that snow that I showed you last week. But even during the day, as long as it's sunny and bright, I can let the fire go out. Because sometimes, believe it or not, there's a 70 or 80 degree difference from outside the greenhouse to inside. I'm telling you, it's like a sauna in here right now. But it feels really good after being out there. Yeah, so things are coming along in here. I'll show you. We've got some things germinating good. Uh, some things are growing a little too fast. When I show the greenhouse, I get a mixed bag of comments. A lot of people really like to see the progress in here, uh, see the outcome from the experiments that we do, because they want to learn and they want to build their own greenhouse and learn from our mistakes and our successes, you know. Other people don't want to see the greenhouse, and they let me know. Well, if this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm sharing. You know, I share the real deal of what we're doing. Uh, I'm not running out in the woods with my Dutch oven today because I'm not cooking out there today. Uh, <laughs> when I started my channel, I was living seven miles away from my cabin, and I used to spend a lot of time there, so I did a lot of cabin videos. So now my cabin's 300 miles away, and we started a new life here. So what I share with you is the real thing. Sometimes it's exciting and fun, other times it's not. But, you know, I try to keep it as interesting as possible. But again, what I'm showing you is what I'm doing. So anyway, I can't keep everybody happy. But we want to live self-sufficiently, so that means grow your own food. And we built the greenhouse and we grow our own food. And we want to start all of our plants from seed. It's most economical that way and it's most rewarding that way. So that is what we're doing and that is what I'm showing you. Yeah, but it won't be too long that we'll be building a new cabin and get a new journey going. And I'll be sharing that with you. So anyway, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff growing up there, and I'll show you a closer look. Then up there on the top shelf, there's a ton of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff up here. This place is like a jungle in here, man. Things are growing like a weed without the weeds. These are some of the green onions. Uh, some people call them scallions, you know, that I started in the wintertime. 
and we could already pick some scallions right now. I have some growing here and then some over there in that bed and there's some there and then I also have some growing behind me here in a window box. Yeah, you can see these are leaning towards the sun over here. And we have some more starting in here. I have two options with the onions. I can plant them in the dirt outside in about a month or start them in here and give them a head start. Hey, they're going to get a head start. In fact, all of these, all of these were started in trays. I start everything in the floating seed trays. Now these plants here are growing a little bit too fast. These are spaghetti squash. These are doing great. Yeah, look at those there, huh? Another one there. And we got a mixture of stuff here. These are morning glories, a different kind. That's a Swiss chard. These are zinnias. Grew a lot of zinnias around the garden last year. This is a Cosmos. These are more zinnias here. Up here on this top shelf, there's all kinds of stuff growing here. This is the prime real estate up here. Okay, there's cups of tomatoes there. There's some broccolis over there. Look at all the stuff growing over there, huh? Tons of it. Tons of it. Same thing with here. Lots of stuff up here. Doing really well. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. This is some of the giant Swiss chard here. The tomatoes, cucumbers starting. All kinds of flowers, which are very beneficial for the garden. The little bean plants reaching for the sun there. Now some of these tomato plants here, these little seedlings, these are going to get put into cups like this probably within a day or two. I could leave those in the foam trays for a long time, but like I said, I experiment with things and I have found that when I take them out of the foam trays and I put them in the red cups and I give them a little bit of room to stretch their legs, they just accelerate. Oh. Well, I guess showed you, the ones in the pots look a lot bigger than the ones in the foam trays and they were planted at the same time. The proof's in the pudding. You know, flowers are doing really good. All different kinds and colors. A lot of the flowers, they really like the heat and humidity in here. As I was in the greenhouse filming that stuff, I heard a tree break out here, so I came out to look. That maple tree just broke right there. Yeah, some more firewood. We're going to get these logs to the sawmill. These are going to get milled up for the new home. Now, I think I already told you that in the new house, we're going to put round log ceiling joist overhead. It's what we put in the screen house here when we built it. Really nice look to that. So that's what we want to do in the new place. But I want to gather up some spruce poles. I know of some spruce in the woods that are dying, and I want to harvest those. But... With the windstorm, we lost another tree over here, and look at this. Over here, a spruce broke, fell down. So not only is this the species of tree that I want, it's a perfect diameter, and I can probably get two ceiling joists out of this log. Maybe even more than that. So once again, Mother Nature provided just what I wanted. Another little gift from the heavens this morning. Oh, that's a dandy of a log right there. You're going to see that in the new house. So I'm heading down over to the other property right now. I think I'm just going to cut some trees and drag brush for maybe an hour, finish out the day. Yep, work up an appetite before supper. <laughs> we took about a week or so off of that project to get the gardens taken care of here like I was showing you. And uh, we did that just in time, man. That couldn't have worked out any better than it did. Uh, bought a truckload of man manure, got that spread all over the garden, all that nice stuff that's composted manure. And then the snow came, and then the rains, and it'll get everything settled in, push all those nutrients into the soil. Fantastic. If we would have waited on that project, we would be working in the mud. But we did it all at the right time, got it done, it couldn't have worked out any better. So now we're picking back up on the tree cutting and land clearing and uh, making good progress over there. But it's slow going because it's just the two of us. But right now I'm just going to go, like I said, 
work for a little while, just work up a good appetite and uh, call it a day. So we've been getting this opened up pretty good here now. Getting a decent view here. These pines are going to come down this week probably. We were going to put the cabin right there. And I decided that we're going to put it basically right here in front of this rock. I'll pull that old stump there and then some of those lupines and the other flowers that were growing in the greenhouse that I showed you will be planted at the base of that rock. So where I'm standing right now is where the cabin's going to be. I'll give you a look around. Looking to the east, there's not much view. You go straight ahead, just drops down, get the water down below, the mountain there, and that comes down. The other mountain pass goes behind it. Yeah, when these pines are all down, that's going to be quite the thing. We're going to eventually clear back to about there. So we will have a view of about 180 degrees right from sun up <laughs> to sunset. And that'll be perfect for solar. Yeah. So now down here I'll show you what we've been doing. Getting all the brush and piles with the butt ends facing one way so we can drag it away. Really made a difference down here. See all our brush piles and the firewood there. Yeah, so we're going to go back about another 50 feet from that old stump there, get this all cleared up, and then these pines have place to fall and a place for us to work to clean it up. Can't just drop a whole bunch of stuff, get it all tangled up, because then it gets really dangerous. So we've been taking it a little at a time, keeping it safe and enjoying the process. When I first announced that we were going to build another cabin and I started showing you this parcel, a lot of questions have come in. People are curious, they want to know, what are our intentions? Are we going to live here? Is this just going to be a camp? Uh, I told you I would answer these questions in the next video, so that's what I'm going to do. This will be our home. Most likely it will be the last home that I ever build. Probably not the last little camp but the last home. I'm going to be 59 this year. Uh, I can't keep doing this forever, but I can do it now, so I'm going to do it. This is a beautiful piece of property. It offers us everything that we want. We have conservation land behind us, conservation land in front of us, miles of woods. I can see the mountaintop where the camp is now. We have walking distance to our little cove on the lake water below, mountains behind, I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. We have easy access right off of the pavement, so up there near the pavement will be the building and we will have our food service again, we'll have our spice business, and that's going to be on grid. You're not going to get a food processing license in a cabin with an outhouse kind of deal. So that will be on the grid, up there, easy access, UPS can come in and out, that sort of thing. But then way here in the back, then we have our cabin life, you know, our camp life, off the grid. And we have all this beautiful southern exposure for the solar. It's perfect. We will eventually sell the camp, but I don't know when. Uh, my plan at this point in time is to keep about 25 acres for myself. And I might put a little cabin like I have in New York, way in the back of that and have that little cabin to escape to because a guy's got to have that escape you know what I'm saying <laughs> so that is the plan now we have this this is a big project for the two of us it's just us cutting in the road cutting the, all this timber uh, it's an ambitious project it is so uh, we're taking it and at a little at a time enjoying the process and we're, you're going to see a freaking cool cabin go up, okay? So, yeah, selling the camp, it's a tough decision, but I won't need it. The dream has been fulfilled, and it's time to move on, and that's fine. But for those of you that have followed me for a long time, what have you heard me say? I 
leapfrog from dream to dream. I conquer a dream, I use that dream as a stepping stone to move on up to the next dream. And then, like, I've built a cabin, and I live in it, and I enjoy it for a while, and I sell that, and I go on and I chase dreams. And these conquered dreams are stepping stones as I keep moving on and up. And that's what I'm going to do. One dream finances another, and another, and another. So if I sell the camp with about three acres, keep 25 for myself, dreams fulfilled, not going into debt, staying debt free the way I need to be, and living life to the fullest. Then when I go to my grave, I did everything I wanted to do while I could do it. Everything is done. Bucket list is done. And that's living. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs>